Welcome to A Fables A Day, in which the archivist reviews an issue of Fables A Day up till the final issue, where he will undoubtedly cry like a baby. And there is no restraint on spoilers, so if that's a problem for you, well then go read the series and then come back. On with the show! Fables number 44, Back to Baghdad, Chapter 3 of Arabian Nights and Day, in which a fable is exiled and words are mixed up. We start with Boy Blue emptying out the witching cloak, which has entire libraries of books he stole while he was crossing the homelands, hoping to gain any intel they can from them. Frau Totenkinder tells Beast the djinn was uncorked. The djinn, meanwhile, makes his way to Baghdad, getting an entire list of people he needs to kill from one of Yusef's allies before killing him. Wait, that doesn't sound right. Anyways, Prince Charming explains to Boy Blue that his sentence isn't as light as he'd hoped, and it's a full year of confinement and two years on the farm, before he starts crying about how hard being mayor is. Boy Blue, unsurprisingly cold, tells him that he asked for all of this. Meanwhile, Beast and a select few mount up to take the Arab camp, unsure if the djinn was a sign of aggression from the whole envoy or just one person. The djinn finishes the first wish before starting to fly back to Fabletown for wish two. Beast and the rest of them are leading the envoy, black-bagged, into the dungeons in the business office. Outside, an angry mob is complaining that Fabletown is now a police state and everything like that before Boy Blue comes out. Unable to cope with the extra year of confinement, he's chosen to be exiled to the farm. Kay looks in, and it's official that Yusef acted alone. As the rest go to double-check with Sinbad, Frau Tone Kinder explains why she isn't afraid of to Yusef. See, she used her magic to alter what Yusef wished for to the djinn. His wishes were actually to kill his secret allies, then for the djinn to devour him, and finally, the djinn would go back to his bottle. Boy Blue's story is getting sadder and sadder, with him having to leave the budding relationship with Red Riding Hood and exile himself to the farm. But don't worry, it gets happier for a little bit, but that's a different story. As for wrapping up the evil vizier and djinn story, I almost want to say it feels like a cop-out because of how built up the djinn was before the wishes were made. But at the same time, I think it's a brilliant use of the human error sort of defeat without making it some two meter wide weak spot that only the lead character who's used to take out target that big back home could manage to hit sort of ending. So all in all, it works as a plot plus it gives Frau Totenkinder another badass moment, and she deserves every one she is going to get. So next time, the Herb Convention comes to a relative close.